So it's not necessarily the case that optical density sum will give the, the best results in every image, but now you can go in, you can look at the color transforms and get an idea of what might be the most appropriate image to apply your detection to. So I'm going to leave it at optical density sum then, and then start to move down a bit further. So the next parameter that we've got is request of pixel size. And this really defines the resolution of the image that QPath will run its detection at. And you can see it's specified to be 0.5 at the minute. QPath doesn't necessarily use exactly that value because it tries to not resize by some strange arbitrary amount. It tries to do it in more integer chunks, as I recall. Um, and what we can see, the request of pixel size is 0.5. The actual pixel size in the image is about 0 0.2271. So that suggests it will downsample the image by probably a factor of two or thereabouts. Because QPath is trying to create an image where the pixel size is somewhere in and around 0 0.5, whereas the original image is closer to 0 0.25. So that means it needs to downsample by a factor of roughly two. Now that means the image will actually be a quarter of the size of the full resolution image then for this region because you're having the width and having the height. If I was to want, want to run it at the full resolution image, then I'll type in a pixel size that comes a bit closer to what that resolution is. And if I run it, you can see QPath actually has to divide the image into two because each region is then too large to handle in one go. It will do that in parallel, it'll run the detection, and then this is the results that we get. And so we may get slightly improved results, arguably, but if I switch to the annotations tab, tab, you can see when I select this rectangle, we have a positive percentage of about 10.6 nuclei in here are positive. If I go back to the vault, the vault of 0 0.5, then we get about 10.9. And so it's a 0.3% difference. And so they're very similar results, but they are still different and it may still be worth exploring. Um, but we've got other parameters to look at as well. I would suggest that this means that the results are pretty similar. Whenever you run the analysis in a very large region, you will really notice a difference in speed if you run at a lower requested pixel size as opposed to a higher one. So you might wonder what happens if you move further so I'll double this again. And so now I'm running on a pixel size of about one micron. So this is about downsampled by a factor of four. Then the detection is much faster. The positive percentage is 11.1. .1. And so again, it's still pretty close to how it was before. You might see the contours of the nuclei are maybe slightly less convincing, but still very similar results. I'll double it again. And then now you really start to see a big difference. The positive percentage is about 11.8. So it's still by one, 1.5% 1 difference from running at the full resolution, less than 1% difference in uh, absolute terms compared with running at pixel size of 0.5. But the contours are much less believable, probably missing more nuclei. And I probably wouldn't want to normally go this far. If not, I would sometimes run the cell detection and in live demos, I would usually run the cell detection at a pixel size of one because it is substantially faster without losing a lot in terms of accuracy, uh, which corresponds with most scanners to be about 10, 10x magnification. But the default is a pixel size of 0 